Kira, thank you. I call Jenny Marcroft. E tu ake ana a hau, kei raro i te kurawai aroha o oku tupuna. I stand here, embraced in the loving kurawai of my ancestors. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm honoured to speak on behalf of New Zealand First, on Te Pere Hayata Ki Parihaka, the Parihaka Reconciliation Bill. He kaupapa tino pauri, tino taumaha hoki ki a kaha. Ngā manaakitanga i runga i a koe, hei karoria ki te atua rongo rawa. Hei maunga rongo ki runga ki te whenua, hei whakaro pai ki nga tangata katoa. From Luke 2.14. And those are the words that are inscribed on the headstone of Te Fiti o Rongo Mai. And I welcome today all of those from the Parihaka Fano who are here in the gallery to witness this significant day. I'd like to make acknowledgement of those who have spoken before me and who are still to come to speak on this bill um, and the emotional uh, experience for all of us who have been uh, a witness uh, and who have learned about what has happened in history at Parihaka. And it is a day for all of us to uh, take stock, to learn and to move forward with hope in our hearts that healing can take place and we can all move forward together. I would like to talk a little bit about the history because I feel it needs to be on record and not just for myself to be able to express it. At a time when the greed for land was greater than the recognition of our tongue at Whenua, there were violations of tapu, violations of whakapapa, and violations of whenua. Now, we cannot absolve ourselves of the past. We cannot undo the damage that has been dealt, damage that is very relevant yesterday, today, and tomorrow. There is a cascade of grief when we look and see what was endured by Parihaka in the name of New Zealand. Like a ripple of, of water as a stone drops into its clear surface, the tidal waves of the disturbing devastation of the peoples of Parihaka saturates the establishment of this country with shame, with guilt, and with the legacy of devastation and terror. <coughs> And when we look at the story surrounding the invasion of Parihaka in 1881, we, as we know, it was a story of rape and pillage. And it wasn't rape and pillage by accident, by an out-of-control mob, nothing like that. It was rape and pillage by design. It was following legislation which was written by the New Zealand Parliament that the destruction, the imprisonment, and all of the horrors inflicted on the peaceful protesters of Parihaka began. There is a sentence that uh, really struck me in that legislation of 1879. It, it's an act that empowered the governor to set or change the date or place of trial for those committed for offences against the public order, if for any reason it is expedient. If for any reason it is expedient. Expedient. That was the word that was written. It is quite possible the meaning of expedient has changed over time, and it was more like, do what you think was best. But even when you apply that generous reading of that word, when you look at the rest of the enabling legislation of 1879, it's an instruction to smash them up and lock them up, which is why expedient meant take the path of least resistance. If they don't do what they're told, do what you like. It's a cover word, a carte blanche word. Why do you burn these people's homes and sacred places? Because it was the expedient thing to do at the time. Madam Speaker, may this House never give in to expediency. May this House do what is right. There is a figure attached to this settlement. 
Is there money enough? Who can say? There is no amount of money that can wash the stain of parihaka. We can only use the, the past to help shape our future, to learn from the past and truly understand and regret what happened at Parihaka and make it right. Only then is reconciliation possible. Now, Parihaka, as we all know, was a prophetic movement born from the ideas of peace and goodwill. Parihaka grew as a refuge for other Māori and Taranaki, displaced, run off their land, refugees. It was a well-run organisation, a well-run community, a modern settlement of those times, stocked and with crops and livestock, a butcher's shop, a bakery. But you were damned if you did and damned if you didn't. If you fought for your land, in came the militia. If you peacefully tried to defend your and make your point of view, the response was exactly the same. Te Fiti and Tohu, the visionary leaders of Parihaka, tried a new way with the fencing and the ploughing those protests to try to avoid the bloodshed and the tragedy that eventually many suffered. And when the militia did come to Parihaka, they were greeted by women and children singing and with flowers. But characteristically, there was to be nothing visionary in the way the native minister, John Bryce, employed 1,500 soldiers. Te Fiti, Tohu, and the men of Parihaka locked up without recourse. The women and children left defensive, defenceless in the waves of violence, rape and destruction. Now, if we're genuine about this reconciliation, and I believe we all are here in this house today, then of course we must see it as much more than the sorrow and the, sin of the sins of Parihaka and the crushing of a protest movement. Because the protest sprang from a much greater well of thought and experience, we need to understand and learn from the lives and the objectives of Tohu Kakahi and Te Whiti Orungumai. Madam Speaker, this journey of reconciliation must be one that restores balance, the, must restore mana, and it also needs to be a turning point for those in New Zealand who have never understood, who have never known about this part of our shameful history. So while we have hope, and much hope for the people of Parihaka, let's hope too that the rest of New Zealand can understand and learn from this experience. The past has always been present for, for our people in Parihaka, and while many Pākehā are only just beginning to learn the truth, the mamai of Parihaka transcends generations and government elections and the horrors that haunt our very history. The desecration of Parihaka is a stain on New Zealand. Madam Speaker, etched in the pages of history, Te Whiti and Tohu, the gospel of pacifism, the prophecy of Parihaka, the vision of the albatross that swept down, the feather that fluttered to the ground, the rokura, a tohu, a prophecy of peace, the unique symbol of the white rokura, the white feather, and the pako, 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 the drumbeat of the poi, becoming the beating of the heart of the people of Parihaka. Now a new drum is beating as this settlement is seen as a point of healing, as the people of Parihaka and the Crown begin to march closer together. Madam Speaker, New Zealand First wants to join in taking a role in ushering in a new day of hope and prosperity for the people of Parihaka, the people of Taranaki. Today, with my colleagues and our leader, we want to celebrate a forward-looking vision to see beyond Te Pauri Nui o Parihaka. Tēnā koutou katoa. Te te mangai te whare. I call tū te hau nuku koroakau. Emi hiatu ki a koe.